What's up beautiful people, welcome back on my YouTube channel, your girl Rachel Sangara with yet another video after more than two years of absence. Well, life has been pretty busy. <laughs> um, yeah, if I have to make a video, you know, telling you everything that has been going on business wise or in the beauty or whatever that I share with you or that I used to share with you. That would be a long series. If you want to know something about my life, um, let me know. Maybe I can make some, some video and let, let you know. Maybe you could learn one of two things. But anyway, that's not what this video is about. Today is about the Mandela Washington Fellowship, you guys. Yes, you heard me right. The Yali Mandela Washington Fellowship. Um, so I had the privilege to be selected uh this year um so applied last year and then i got selected and i went to uh the us for a six-week program and i came back it's a very prestigious program and just to give to tell you how competitive it is um it was only one percent of the applicants who were selected in the congo okay <laughs> um <laughs> it was that stuff and just so that you know, I applied three times before getting selected. So I got rejected three times and then, you know, got admitted the fourth time. So keep it up. It's absolutely worth it. You, you lose nothing by applying. You only get better every time you get rejected. You get better and you know what to do better. So I know my, my audience is mostly French speaking, but I'm making this video in English and I'm not going to put any subtitle because if you can't hear me then you shouldn't apply for this <laughs> um this is basically just a video to encourage you guys to apply this is a life-changing program and kind of guides you on how you should do it because the application has been open since august 15th and i'm only shooting this video today because i haven't had time today's the 27th hoping that I can actually drop it on the 30th because it's going to need some editing and you still have 12 days before um, um, the deadline because the deadline is September 12th. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just trying to encourage other young um, leaders uh, to, to take this opportunity. you got nothing to lose. All right, let's start. So we're going to talk about, I think, um, five points and I'm going to dive right into it. Uh, make sure that you write in the, in the comment section if you want me to give an update about my business life, how it's been going. And um, if you have other questions about what I will say, just let me know. I will try to answer them. Um, so first point, what is the Mandela Washington Fellowship? Um, what is YALI? Uh, so YALI stands for Young African Leaders Initiative. Um, that was initiated by um, President Barack Obama 10 years ago. Um, and, you know, the program that takes care of, like, giving you the skills and sending you to the U.S. for six months to come back, it's called the Mandela Washington Fellowship, MWF. And basically what it does is it selects every year since it was launched, every year at least 700 young African leaders across the continent in sub-Saharan uh, and South African uh, countries. I mean, if you go to the website, there's a list of countries that are eligible and you'll see. And um, they are selected based on what they do, based on their proven record of leadership in their community, either in business tracks, in, in civic engagement or in public management. And uh, they are taken into a partnership uh, college in the US so there are different colleges in the U.S. where they send for each college, there's 25 fellows coming from different countries and they make sure to give you the skills that you need to actually uh, level up and serve more your community and, and, and birth that project that you either working on or planning to work on or scale it. Um, they give you the knowledge that you need to grow and to impact more because this is all about creating the future leaders or or giving the tools to the future leaders to actually impact more and I, so there are keywords here there are leaders there's impact this community that's gonna come back all the time um, and then they also make sure that there's um, you network you you there's enough networking opportunity for you with Americans uh, you network um, you know 
up, you network on your level and you network down as well. You network with other young African leaders just like yourself. You network with other business people from the US and you create, you know, amazing uh, business relationship, business, you know, potential uh, partnerships and, and all that. And, and I'll, I'll tell you up front, you're the biggest network you're going to have here, at least for me, is the other young leaders like yourself from different countries in Africa, you know. Uh, the aim here is not for you to go and raise money, okay? So don't go around asking people to fund my business. Okay, it's, it's good for you to pitch. You gotta pitch, you, you'll pitch all the time, but the aim is just to network first and get the partnerships that you need somehow to, um, because you know what they say, uh, your network is your net worth, just remember. Um, then uh, there's also cultural ex exchange. So they make sure that you get enough, um, you know, um, enough opportunity to, to exchange the culture with the Americans, how it works in American families, in American businesses, in like the day-to-day -day life of America, American. And you also exchange with them how it works in your country. And so there is that exchange, which is very important and just basically allows you to be open-minded um, about um, a lot of things and just see how things function outside of your own comfort zone or your own um, um, country or culture, voila. And also, of course, there is this uh, encouragement for uh, 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 community service. Um, American people really don't do know how to, um, you know, uh, serve, give back, and that's a huge part of the program. So like every weekend, there's gonna be an activity of community service where you go back in the community and give give your time, give your energy uh, in terms of you know supporting here and there different projects. So basically, that's what the program is about. And I swear to God, and so of course there is a lot of <laughs> obviously academic um, 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 courses and act academic activities and just anything to make you grow, not only as a leader, but also as for me, and I'll speak mostly about um, leadership in business because that's what I did. A lot of a lot of knowledge and tools that you need to grow business and understand more business. For a little background, I studied um, IBA, International Business Administrative in Kenya and in American University, and I um, focused, I concentrated in entrepreneurship. So I already have an idea of what entrepreneurship is. I was, I am, I've been applying entrepreneurship since I don't know when, since forever. And I've been in the field and that's why I was selected anyway. But what I got there, it was just something else. It was just going into the depths of things and simplifying things for me in a way and just giving me everything that I didn't just get in school. Uh, despite the fact that I thought that I knew already, I went right back in school. And so in six weeks, they give you lessons worth of a couple of months of, of an MBA, you know, a couple of semesters, let's say one or two semesters of an MBA. And so it's intense and absolutely worth it. You have very little time to sleep or rest, but it's fine. It's completely worth it. I, I enjoyed every part of it. So yes. That is what the Mandela Washington Fellowship um, is about. And uh, the second point that I was gonna talk about is, no, I actually, sorry. Listen, I am going to mix things. This is my YouTube channel, it's not the news. So I am allowed to like be a bit uh, not as organized. <laughs> so I've already mixed two points. The first point was what is the Mandela Washington Fellowship and why the Mandela Washington Fellowship, you know, like why you should apply. What are you gonna gain from it? People just were seeing me posting stuff on, 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 on Instagram with not, with not much context because I didn't really have time to like post and tell all these things when I was there because it was too, uh, too hectic. But in this video, I'm hoping that I can make you understand more why I was not on a vacation, as some of you thought. Um, and you can understand what the program was about and you can be encouraged to actually apply. Um, so that is two points already down. Uh, the other point I am going to, cause I know most of you just don't read, although everything can be found, <laughs> you know, online on the website. I'm just going to read for you the eligibility criteria, uh, which you probably already know or heard of. Of course, first thing first, um, you gotta be between 25 and 35. So you gotta be young. 
um, not too young, uh, not too old. Okay, 36 is not old at all. <laughs> Don't worry, that's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying that's 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 how it goes. That's the criteria criteria, and you cannot change that unless you applied. You were 35, and then by the moment you arrive, you're already 26. That I mean, 36. That makes sense. Also, you could apply if you're younger than 25. You just have to be very special with a great, um, 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 you know, impact that you're having in your community, proven record of leadership. If you're young, you you can be taken at 23, 20. To 24, we had one 24 year old, we had one 36 year old in my cohort at Clark Atlanta. I don't know if I've talked, to, okay. I think I need to make in a whole video about Clark Atlanta. It was just Clark Atlanta University, oh, amazing. The people that we had there, oh, don't get me into that anyway. <laughs> um, and the experience in general was just fantastic, anyway. Criteria from 25 to 35. Um, you can't be a, a U.S. citizen or a permanent um, residence in the U.S. You gotta be an African leader living in Africa. Do you? I need to check if you have to just be living in Africa, but I, don't, I know you shouldn't be living in the U.S. Um, you have to be eligible to receive the J-1 uh, visa. Um, yeah, if any in any way something disqualify you to have this visa obviously you cannot be selected because you cannot go you not be granted a visa um you shouldn't have an immediate family or member um, of your family is an employee of the u.s government or usaid and all these governmental institutes um you should be uh, in one of the following countries so there's a list of countries that is, are giving that you can check that out and then, um, yeah, for, uh, and then the best thing <laughs> to remember, the reason why this video is in English is that you have to speak English and you have to hear English. You have to be able to write in English. You, well, I'm sorry. I just, I've been saying this for a long time. I know we're a French speaking country. We quote unquote don't have to know English, but you need to understand how much you are very limited in terms of, of opportunities if you don't speak English. So I really encourage you to start practice, practicing your English as much as you can, okay? Um, maybe you can apply next year. You take this year to just practice your English, not just practice your English. Have your life going and life happening. Be great as you're practicing your English and then you can apply next year. Um, or that a year after you're still young i suppose if you're watching me right now and are interested in this and so you still have time just remember i applied three times before i got selected so there's no harm in you being you know uh perseverant and patient with yourself and tolerant with yourself it's all right okay it's all right so practice more practice makes perfect they say those are the criteria of, of uh, eligibility now for the criteria of Selection, yes. Um, so, first thing first, obviously, you gotta have a proven record of leadership in your community. It can be in business, it can, in entrepreneur, business entrepreneurship could be the civic engagement or uh, public management or um, government service. Uh, yeah, I guess that's really the most important thing here. Just know that you gotta be doing something with your life you cannot be sitting not just for this just in real life you cannot be a whole 25 years old who is sitting on their behind just waiting for life to happen no you gotta make things happen okay and in your respective job or in your entrepreneurship journey or in whatever cause in your activism you know we had a lot of activists there and they had their special program it was amazing for them um i have been entrepreneurial from day one so when they selected me they really had to look at my my journey what i've done so far what i've accomplished so far and check it out you know i said it but they had to check it out okay and so that's really what i would say really got them to take me um so there's that as the first criteria um then there is a demonstrated com commitment to public or community service volunteerism and or mentoring um really there's no i don't know there's no leader 
You cannot be a leader if you are at the center of your why, if you do things just for you, if you do things not thinking about other people, your community, the bigger picture, how to give back. And basically, they really, take, they really look into this. How many times have you volunteered in your life? Do you usually just do things not for money, but just because they will you know, help other people out there and make your community grow as a whole, you know, and make your people you know, go forward? So th there's that. Um, the ability to work cooperatively in diverse group and to respect the opinion of others. Um, I don't know, and I understand how unflexible we can be here because of how we grow culturally, but I don't think there's any harm in just respecting people and people's opinions and who they are and their choices and what they decide to do with their lives. And this is really just what this is about, okay? Um, there's gonna be a lot of things that you're not gonna understand because they are completely out of your culture. They're just something you've never seen. It's gonna be a complete culture shock. But let's be the person who is able to still respect that. You don't have to understand it. You just have to respect it and move on with your life. What's, how does it even hurt you? Like, take it, okay, respect it, move on, okay? If you're that kind of person, good for you. You can be, you know, eligible for this. Um, song, social, and communication skills. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of opportunity for you what you have to be social. You have, I understand, for my introvert people, I understand you, I'm so sorry, but the thing is, you're gonna have to charge on your social battery a lot because there's gonna be a lot of networking, there's gonna be a lot of you getting out of your comfort zone in terms of public speaking, um, and you know, just communicating and communicating. I mean, not just talking, because you could be talking without communicating at all. You gotta be able to communicate and tell people, translate what's in your head, put it sound and put so that other people can understand it. So yeah, that's something you need. And they can read that basically in your essays or in your interview when you're gonna have the interview. So yeah, practice that even if you don't have this. I mean, after you hear this video, you can decide that it's okay for me to not apply this year. It's completely fine. I mean, what can go wrong? You'll apply next year, so what? You'll be doing great and having a greater CV that will impress them more and they can select you maybe one year or two years after, you know? Yep. Um, be energetic, positive, and flexible attitude. Well, I feel like they're describing me. If you know me, then you know. <laughs> I don't even know how to explain this. It's just, as I said, pack up your social battery, try to pump the energy, and be positive. Like, ain't nobody got time for so much negativity in here. Like, not now. It's okay for you to be like that from time to time. Or if you're going through this season, I'm really sorry for you. I hope you get in a better place, uh, get the help that you need. Yeah, but for, for this, it's important for you to have that attitude because you're going to meet a lot of people. For, for me, for example, we were 24 and we're coming from 18 different countries. And so there's no way, like when, you, when somebody is negative, the energy never lies and it could just be uncomfortable for everybody else. And so try to remember that, you know, you need to be a bit positive for this, not just for you, but for everybody else. Anyway, I'm gonna go on. Um, a demonstrated knowledge of interest in and professional experience in the preferred sector. So you're not just gonna pick um, the leadership in business while you have no history whatsoever in business or no interest whatsoever in business. That's gonna be so boring and so overwhelming and just don't do this to yourself. Pick something you are passionate about, then this is gonna be worth it. Then the learning is gonna be fun. Then the pain is gonna be worth it, okay? So there's that. Um, uh, you have to have a commitment to um, return to Sub-Saharan Africa and contribute, um, and contribute skills and talent to build and serve their community, your community. Basically, that's again what I said in the beginning. There's gonna be a lot of community serving you know, that's what a leader is supposed to be doing, thinking about their community before themselves. Um, and so here, really targeting the people who think that they're gonna go in the US and run away, or they're gonna go in the US and stay there and start a life there. Listen, don't get me wrong, you're gonna, America is amazing, at least the part of America I was exposed to. I was in Atlanta, you guys, you, do you understand? Atlanta was mind-blowing. I am in love with that place, okay? 
And so, yeah, somebody will, have, will be tempted to be like, oh, my God, I want to be here. I want to stay here, you know. Um, but just remember while you're there, um, you're not going to be one of those people who get there, run away, embarrasses an entire country, and, you know, just kill the opportunity for hundreds of other people. That, I, By the way, shout out to my Congolese people. For the past 10 years, there's no single Congolese person who have ever run away, despite us having that reputation. Ah! <laughs> Wait, so we are, we are improving, baby. We are. <laughs> but there are some countries that have history of people running. I remember my, my Ethiopian friend told me that there have been a couple of people from Ethiopia who ran away. And since that happened, they had to reduce the number of Ethiopians that go. So what, when one person does that, they kill it for hundreds of other people who could have had that opportunity and change their country and make things better for them and the continent. But just because somebody was selfish and was like, uh, and they feel like America is the place to be and like, I'm going to abandon my life back home and just stay here. There are problems everywhere, darling. I don't know if I have to be the one to break this to you, but this is not going to be any perfect. Like, it's great, but there are problems too. They might not have the same problem as us in Africa, but they have their problems too. So you're not like running to go into paradise. No, in fact, you coming back here, you are going to do something great for your community, something great for yourself, but then you staying there. I don't even know what kind of life you're going to be, you're going to have as a person with no papers and, oh boy, don't do that. Anyway, next. <laughs> so, last point. I'm trying to not make this video long, but I feel like this last point is going to take a long time because this is about how to apply what to, expl to expect when applying. So I just, I just put out my, my application right in front of me here, and there's a bunch of sections um, that you're going to have. So you need to head to www.mandelawashingtonfellowship.com and you can get all the information that you need. You can open an application already, and you can you know start knowing what is expected from you. Um, and you can actually start your application because you don't have to start it and submit it directly. You can start and then save and then come back tomorrow and then save and then until, you know, the very last day. Then you can, you can make sure that you're uploading something that you've, you know, take, it, take your time yeah, um, to go through and make sure that you know what you, what you are putting. So there's no pressure on you to, like, do it directly and apply it directly, okay? You still have, like, 12 days. I believe by the, by the time I release this video, you'll have 12 days um, to apply. Um, yeah. So um, you can also go and follow um, Mandela Washington Fellowship uh, on, on, on Instagram and Facebook and, and LinkedIn, and you can be getting more information and all tips and tricks on how to uh, apply. You can follow the U.S. Embassy and U.S. Embassy Kinshasa for my Congolese people. Um, but, sorry, this video is not just for Congolese people. It's for anybody who's trying to apply, okay? Uh, because these apply for everybody. Um, yeah. Uh, so, first part of, of the application. I'm just looking at my application because they, they give you the chance to... Um, if Can we show this? Uh, hello? Machiavelli. I'm trying to show this. <laughs> um, this is how long it is because they give you the opportunity to just, sorry, to just um, uh, download your application. You need to excuse me if I keep on sometimes losing my English and go like, um, um, you all just need to know English is my fourth language. So before these come out of my mouth, they have to go through like two or three languages. And so it's, it's a lot going on in my head right now. So pardon me if my English is not perfect. But anyway, so I have my application here. I downloaded it and kept it. And this is how long it is. OK, so these are my university transcript that I had to share. But yeah, it looks pretty much like this. Uh, so you have you have a bunch of sections. I think there are eight or nine. If I'm wrong, just correct me in the. If you're a Mandela Washington fellow, alumni, I, I'm not alumni now. I, I don't think I've bragged enough about that. <laughs> um, you can correct me if I say something that is not correct. It's fine. You know, I, again, I'm not like reading any book or anything. I'm just transferring to the people what I know, and I could be wrong about some details. Um, but yeah, let's go on. So, 
Uh, first section is about general information. They ask you for your name, where you're from, your gender, your, when you were born, your city, your birthday, all of that. Second is contact information. You give your contacts, address, and blah, blah, blah. Just make sure that the numbers that you give there they can reach you through those numbers because when they called me for the first time for an interview, it was not actually an interview. It's a, like a pre-interview. I think they're trying to test your English proficiency for, for French-speaking countries or Portuguese-speaking countries or Spanish. Uh, yeah, there's a country in Africa that speaks Spanish. Did you know that? So they have to like just check if you actually can speak English. And so um, they would just randomly call you and talk about anything. How was your day? <laughs> Do you remember why you applied? And that's, you know, a couple of days after because really, to be honest with you, it takes time, right? Because the deadline is um, like you, you the, the application is open from August 15th to September 12th. And then in November, from November to January, that's why the semi-finalists get their interview by their U.S. local embassies. And then in March 2024, that's when the application uh, notified, the, the applicants are notified of their status. If you got selected or not, you will know in March, okay? But before that, you'll be called for an interview or not. So right now, we're just worrying about the essays and the application. The interview will come later. Before the interview, I'll make another video for the interview, okay? Right now, we're focusing on the essays. In March, to tell you if you're selected or not. In May, visa process and departure and orientation. So if you leave, for example, I live in Goma and the U.S. Embassy is in Kinshasa all the way. So they fly you to Kinshasa for the orientation and the visa um, to the capital, yeah? Um, and then you feel they fly you back home and then you get to travel in June, okay? So remember, August, September application, November, December uh, interviews, uh, March, you know if you, you're selected or not, uh, May, visa process and, 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 and departure, uh, orientation for final, the, final, the finalist, and June, departure for the U.S. until um, end August, you're back. No, not end August, sorry, beginning August, because I was back here on like, the fee for the, sev or the sixth of this month. So I'm still processing all the information. This is quite new. So I'm making this video just because I care about you. And you guys were asking me for a video, a live on, on Instagram. I ain't doing that. Nah, ain't nobody doing a live. I'm, I'm going to do a YouTube video. <laughs> um, yeah, that was the contact information going back. So again, I said, sorry if I'm going up and down and, and mixing things, but bear with me. What choice do you have anyway? You're going to have to bear with me. <laughs> I mean, I was selected. I was one of the 1% that was selected. So I think I have something to tell you, right? <laughs> um, so the eligibility, now they check your country, they check your age, they check, um, you know, if you've participated before. Because like, if I'm an alumni, I cannot, obviously I cannot uh, um, be selected twice. Um, and then demographic information, um, they're asking if you are a person with disability, if you are identified as an LGBTQ+. Um, they ask if you, um, you know, questions about demography, uh, what best describe your gender, what are your pronouns. Um, and then there's institute track, you get to pick which is your first, um, first choice track. Obviously for me it was leadership, leadership in business. The second and the third, you get to rank them. Um, and then um, current professional and educational experience. This is basically like, you know, basically like your CV. You just got to say if you, you went to school. By the way, you don't have to have a degree to be to go. You do not have to have a degree to go. That is not one of the criteria. You just have to be a person who can use their brain who is determined to do something for their community, who has a great project and need to be, you know, equipped with, with knowledge and skills to make these things happen. Nobody cares about your degree. No, absolutely nobody. Don't let this limit you, okay? Okay. Um, a bunch of questions about, um, about you. How long have you been doing this? What best describe, um, what you do, the sector you are in. Um, uh, yeah, this is like basically your CV. So you're just gonna have to reply a few questions there. And then 
U.S. travel, if you've traveled to the U.S. before, you gotta have to say when you traveled in the U.S., what kind of visa did you have? Um, was, it, was it for a program? If it was a for, for a program, who invited you? Um, yeah, what kind of program was it? And then they ask you about the language. Do you speak English? Uh, do you, I mean, yeah, yeah, they assess your, your level of English, basically. The question is just assessing your level of English. And then the most important part, this is what gets you selected or not, okay? This is it, the essays. You gotta have to write a lot of essays. One, two, three, four, five, six. These are six essays. And so there's two that are long essays and two and four that are short essays. And for the essays, just remember, plagiarism is cheating. If you are even thinking of plagiarizing, just don't apply, okay? Don't apply. You, shame on you <laughs> i mean you, how can you this is how we have leaders who are just in the position of power and are just cheating and lying and stealing from the people because it starts from the very small thing when you're faithful in small things you can you will be in big things too so yeah do not plagiarize and i know we are in the era of chat gpt now so i'm seeing you guys um <laughs> please try to use what comes from your head okay because yeah i understand chat gtp is a great tool um it can be used in a lot of things to save you time and in, in, in many ways but here i think you need to give you and i really also think that if you use by the way if you try to use chat gpt just think of how many hundreds and thousands of people will try to use chat gpt to write these essays because it's going to be the same question and guess what chat gpt learns very fast and so it might be giving you almost the same answers okay and the people who will be reading your applications aka the alumni and all who are smart enough to know they might just know that you've used chat gpt okay and also you might use chat gpt and then when you do your interview the language will be so different and somebody can tell like who wrote your essays this is not the person who wrote this essay you know what i'm saying so don't do that um use your head at least for this one use your head um that's one thing i'll say so i was saying the two first essays are long essays and um yeah basically 250 words i think and then the rest are like 150 words each and i'm just gonna read you the questions and say a few things about them and finish this video because it's already too long i'm sorry bear with me <laughs> um the first question long essay provide an overview of your major professional accomplishment from the past year as well as your long-term goals and aspirations what motivates you to work in the field that you do basically this is what you sell yourself you start, what have you done? What have you done that you you know you are proud of that that you know has impacted one way or another? And what is your goal? What are you trying to go? How are you trying to accomplish those goals? You know, like in, in the exact field that you talked about before. This is why somebody shouldn't do this for you, or ChatGPT shouldn't do this for you. ChatGPT won't know better uh, what are your goals, and it won't know better like um, what you are the most proud of. Okay, um, so think about that take your time one thing i did one thing i did about the essays and it and it and a, and a tip here that i can give you guys is that i had the, the the third first time i applied i was just applying by myself and i still did everything by myself but this one time i had friends who proposed to proofread my essays so um shout out to my friend nicole she's amazing um she actually read, proofread my essays and was able to help me, you know, maybe change some word that I use. Well, like, do you think this word is the, the right choice? Do you think this looks like you're not being as inclusive or, and, and so yeah, I, I'll change a few words by her advice. And then Marisa too, thank you so much, Marisa. Also read my essay as well and was able to like criticize. You need to be receptive with criticism, okay? Constructive criticism is good for you know the difference between constructive criticism and just hateful criticism um, and then there's my friend Daniel who also asked to if I needed help he could proofread it for me but it was too late I was applying it was already last minute and plus I didn't really think I'm gonna get it I already applied three times I was not you know selected so 
there was no time for me to give it to Daniel for to read. Love you, Daniel. <laughs> um, and and so yeah, if you have people that you trust, you trust uh, they can um, know you know some word better than you. They can see the logic in what you wrote or not, or they can just help you in any way. Help get them to proofread your essays before you you apply you you uh, submit them. Um, Second question, based you know, on, on your understanding of your preferred institute track of leadership, what skills and knowledge do you hope to gain from the fellowship that you would not be able to develop through other opportunities? How will you, you, how will you use those skills and that knowledge to enhance, enhance your activities in your community within the next three to five years? Also, this is a long essay. You just need to give your plan here, what you're expecting from the program and how you're gonna use all that knowledge, okay? Um, then short essays, we have Nelson Mandela said, a fundamental concern for others in our individual and community lives will go a long way in making the world the better place we so passionately dream of. Public and community service are essential responsibilities for leaders. What changes or other improvement do you hope to implement in the communities that you engage through your work? How are you working toward these goal, these goals now? And what else do you hope to accomplish in the future? Yeah, I'm not going to read you what I said because, I mean, this needs to come from you and this is exactly what you're going to be selected or not. But also, let me just say, it's not like if you didn't get selected, then your AC was not good enough. It's just, it could just be that you are overqualified. That's a thing. That's a fact. If you're overqualified, there's a lot of things going on for you already. They feel like you don't need this and this opportunity can serve somebody else. Then they're going to select somebody else. It could also just be that... You are really good, but there's somebody who's really, 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 really good. But who is also probably a female. I'm sorry to say this, but sometimes, you know, they, give, they be encouraging, you know, certain females to apply if they, they didn't want to. Or it could be somebody who is disabled, and so obviously they don't have as much opportunities, and so they will select him over you maybe um, because of that. But so this is just to tell you that you are not any less better because you did not get selected, okay? Uh, and that's why you should keep on applying. Um, another question, another essay, short essay. Strong leaders demonstrate resiliency in the face of challenges. The repercussion of the COVID-19 global health pandemic, economic crisis, and conflict pose significant challenges, both globally and locally. How have you demonstrated resiliency during challenging times? What lessons have you learned from this experience? And how are you applying these lessons in your current work? This is a good, I don't know if this, I don't think these are gonna be the same questions they're gonna ask you. I just think that you should have an idea by the kind of questions that they ask, okay? And then the last questions was Nelson Mandela again. Nelson Mandela was um, awarded the Nobel Prize, Peace Prize for working with leaders to the South African government of the South African government to agree on a peaceful transition to multi-party rule and, and to apartheid, demonstrating that leadership can achieve progress despite differing views or identities. Describe a situation where you use your leadership skills to solve a conflict or disagreement. How do you encourage respectful this discussion when working with people from different background identities or perspectives that was the last question so one thing here is you need to choose your words so well and you have to be brief when it's short essays you cannot go over 150 words for example you cannot go over so this is just to train you to be brief brief and concise and neat just you don't have, there's a lot of things. I am saying this, I struggle with this myself because obviously I talk a lot and I would like to explain a bunch of things, but you gotta be able to just explain it in a really short way and very effective way and just neatly and concise, okay? Short and sweet, keep it like that. And after that, there is, you know, an optional part where you can apply for professional development experience. Uh, it's called PDA. So after the six weeks, those who are selected for this, they stay longer in the US for I think extra four weeks. 
uh, to go do internship in American companies or organization, depending on what they are, what track they are in. If you want to apply for that too, it's very competitive as well. They only select a tiny percentage. I don't remember how much. Please write it in this in the description if you remember. Um, and and so if you want to apply for this, you can apply. And you can be sent, if you're selected, you can be sent to go do an internship in another company. You just have to write long essays about that again, because again, it's competitive. And you're going to prove why you and not somebody else. I did not apply for this this time because I didn't even think I'll be selected, to be honest, because all the other times I applied for this too. And I was not even selected. Um, yeah, and then they ask you three questions about... Um, if you've ever applied for Yali before, how do you hear about Yali and all that? And then if you have one document to, um, to upload, a document you want to upload, you can upload. I chose to upload my academic transcript. Um, I don't know, you can apply a certificate that you have. You can apply anything else that you have. And there's a point where you, they ask you a few questions about if you've ever had an award or um, they ask you about your other certification, community work that you have done, and then awards that you have received or fellowships or grants or scholarship or honors, which you say, and that, that should be it. Listen, sorry this video was long, but it's absolutely worth it. For those who want to apply, this does not just apply for, for this application from 2024, it's also apply for any other application in the future. So share this video with um, your friends who are trying to apply. Um, and no, I don't want no French people to come in and, <laughs> and attack me on the subtitles. Why didn't you have subtitles? Again, if you can't hear me, don't apply. That's why this is in English. I hope this was helpful a little. If I keep on repeating that this program was life changing, you need to believe me, it was life changing. It was, mark my word, just catch me in five years. I'll, I'll show you where this program took me, okay? Because now I'm still just digesting everything that I was given because it was so rich and intense. And it's absolutely not for anybody who doesn't have, who, who doesn't have a strong mind. You're, not, you're gonna break. I mean, <laughs> we were breaking and we consider ourselves strong. So uh, it was crazy, amazing at the same time, <laughs> crazy and amazing at the same time. And the people that you're gonna meet, you know, the, the, the head of the programs, the, the program assistants that I hold very dear to my heart. Our program assistants were amazing. They made this so worth it and easy and beautiful in every way. I can make a whole video just talking about these four individuals. They're like, <laughs> but anyway, I'm not gonna get into that. I can actually make another video talking about just my cohorts and these amazing people we were with, all 24 of us. And, um, but for now, I'm gonna stop here. I don't know if after this, I'm gonna keep on making videos on YouTube. I'll see how this video do, then maybe I'll, I'll go back on YouTube. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you think and ask your questions in the comments. Let me know if the fellows, the people who are trying to apply in Goma want to meet physically. I can make it happen. I can give two hours before the application and discuss with you. And yeah, why not? And answer more questions. In the meantime, I love you. I believe in you. Be great. Keep on, you know, using your talents. And I will see you next time. Love you.